Welcome back. This is still the key point and we're having a conversation about the double salary payments uh, received by some members of parliament in the sixth parliament of the Fourth Republic. Uh, in the studio with me we have um, the Honourable Roxin Dafyamepo, MP for South Dai, and on Zoom we have Mr. Richard Nyama, uh, the Deputy Communications Director for the NPP. Um, I think we can be wrapping up on yes. this yes. issue about, you know, the double salary payments yes. here, but I would want us to look at how to avoid this whole yes. situation because yes. obviously that would help a lot. Um, yeah. Honourable. Yes, I've not, I, I we, we, off camera, we, we, we had a, a chit chat. My point is that the, this, this whole process of determining the appropriate emoluments for Article 71 office holders at the end of their term should, should stop. We should desist from it. We should be able to do so even before they take office. So that this issue of double salary as, as Richard and his team have put out and it's, it appears to, to, to stay in the minds of the people mm. will stop. Where, where there are incidents of double salary payments, by all means, let's deal with, with it according to law. Sure. But where the processes are this way, I am really struggling to appreciate the fact that it will constitute a double salary payment. Uh, that being said, I think the issues that Martin Amidu has put out are very grave to actually make categorical allegations against the president, which for me, if we established, will be a ground for impeachment. Very seriously, because he's, he's accusing the president of interfering in, in the administration of justice. And that is a very grave, 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 grave allegation to make. Mm. I will call for an investigation into the matter. Otherwise, you see, tomorrow he may rehash this again. And so he's alive, the president is alive. And the fact that even members of parliament who are members of the appointment committee who have been alleged to have received double salaries have been compromised. Mm -hmm. It's a very grave allegation to make. So, I mean, I don't want us to gloss over this matter because... He said things in the past and continues to rehash some of those things. We should give him a hearing mm. to assert some of these things. Then they, they, he can be cross-examined on them. Then we can bring a closure. Because he keeps making some of these allegations. Some, some, some even say against that. Let's Professor just, Mills. Let's just ignore yes. him until he substantiates no. it. Do you think it's worth putting resources into perhaps setting up a committee look, or something to look into matters that are unsubstantiated. Against Professor Mills. He keeps making similar allegations. Which are yet to be proven. Yes. So, so, so we need to investigate the things he has said. Mm. Very well. Because Rich he's still around. Tomorrow right. he may occupy another office. Right. Richard, yes. I said, he's had the opportunity to take on... Uh, 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 these issues and deal with them officially because he had a very important office. Yeah. Uh, the allegations my honorable brother uh, 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 said, nothing and stopped Mr. Amidu to have gone back uh, in the past to investigate those things and bring some finality to bear. Yeah. You see, and that is why I'm saying that he's beginning to lose the shine that he had because is allegation upon allegation, you are given the opportunity to actually go beyond the words and act. And it's like Richie, is it losing the shine the because it's not against the also MPC. becomes if the office is even a better place. You were happy. The quitting, oh please. <laughs> uh, I'm saying that I was excited at his appointment. Because, because he made I allegations against the NDC in his uh, anti-corruption uh, uh, fight. And I'm saying that he has proven me wrong because he had the opportunity to put his words into action. And we are yet to see it. Very well. If he had been given the opportunity, maybe we could take his words seriously. But he's been given the opportunity. And it's like when the going guest of he quits. You can't always be quitting and accusing others. You must probably start asking yourself some serious questions. Why no. is it that uh, yeah. I always quit when they're going to get stuff? And why is it that the problem is always with somebody? Maybe it's me. 
Right. I mean, the conversation, the conversation about this issue will definitely continue. And we definitely hope that some closure is brought to bear on this. But I think the lesson in here is how to reform our payment system when it comes to uh, the, the, the office of you know, the parliamentarians and ministers and all of that. Because obviously there's some challenge there and has been raised by Mr. Settepe in his reaction to this issue. And I think it is worth considering. But now we're moving our attention to the fight against Galamse. Operation Halt is set to be in its fourth phase uh, with a focus now on the Ancobra River in the western region. But their operations in the first three phases has not been without controversy. Uh, the burning of excavators has been at the forefront. And in recent times, uh, the president has uh, made some statements to it, which has caused a whole lot of debate around the issue. Now, the president has justified the burning of the excavators and other um, equipment which um, are found on um, illegal mining sites. Um, a number of statements have been issued, contrary views raised, and the president is saying, well, if you have any contrary views, then seek redress in court to have your position vindicated. And that is what we're turning our attention to now. Ms. Nyama. Yes, madam. Yes. The burning of excavators, obviously. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the law, that is something that is being done contrary to the provisions of the law. But the president is saying that, well, I mean, if you, if you feel this is contrary to the law, then go to court. Um, what's your thoughts on this? Thank you very much. Uh, Abna, are you uh, familiar with the principle of necessity? You're, you're a lawyer, and so uh, you're in a better position to expose it better for our, our viewers. But uh, uh, Glanville Williams said this about the principle of uh, necessity. And he says that by necessity is meant the assertion that a conduct promotes some value higher than the value of literal compliance with the law. So that you have what the legal process is. But if you cannot find a solution or if the legal system or structure as it currently exists cannot resolve the issue at hand, and you have the necessity to act for a higher purpose. Legally, it is within your right to do that. And in the court of law, it is recognized. Now, what is the higher purpose at this instance? We are losing our forests, we are losing our water, and the pictures and videos are there for everyone to see. The current legal system or structure has failed to resolve this. Uh. So whilst you are seeking to rearrange and repurpose the system to resolve it, do you sit down and wait and let things go the way they are going? Obviously not. Very well. So you, you, you share That's the it. president's um, um, justification or endorsement of the... Oh, it's, it's, it's a hundred and I'm giving you Very the well. legal basis. No, that's I'm fine. Giving the, I'm giving you the legal no, That's fine. That. Let me hear from Honorable Dafi Amakwa as well. Oh, quite a lot. Oh, no, you've got I'm your point. I'm really started, I'm not. I, no, but see, we, we have a lot of issues to discuss, okay? So your comments are well noted. You've made your point. Let me have his comments as well. There, there are other angles to this. Ms. Nyama, you know that. Yes, Honorable. I hope, we'll come, I hope we'll come to those other angles. Definitely. Read it. We will. He's, he's called in the, the doctrine of necessity. Yes, the Let's doctrine of necessity is well embedded in jurisprudence. You cannot torpedo the tenets of the Constitution and use an, an illegality to remedy an illegality. The doctrine of necessity doesn't condone that. You must use law to remedy an illegal situation. The president himself brought a bill to parliament just two years ago and provide a procedure that where it is determined that property had been acquired for the commission of a crime, it is termed tainted property. Even determining 
the tintedness of a property acquired. It is not the executive. It is not the Jubilee House to determine that. It's the law courts. Now I'm happy you quoted Granville Williams. So, you know, and, and, and I agree with Occupy Ghana when they say that the, the, even the opportunity he used to make the comment is so, 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 so auspicious. Look, you don't have the array of the Superior Court judges sitting. And you say this, let the head of the military detachment say that. They're in the bush, let them say it. And let the, let the presidency use its good offices to tidy it up. Mm. But for that to come from the, the head of state, sends a message. And let's listen, to, let's listen to that statement coming from the horse's own mouth then. Very well. Brown, so if, if it's ready, please, let's, let's, let's don't let's like say my galamse excavator burning up. Uh, excavation, sorry, the, the justification yeah. for the burning of the excavation. Please, yeah. let's have that played. Okay. The ongoing exercise of bringing our water bodies and forest zones of powerful equipment and machinery is unlawful. In some cases, harsh. I strongly disagree. And I would advise those who take a contrary view to go to court and vindicate their position in this so much. That is what the rule of law is all about. The use of chamfines in water bodies is illegal, as is the unlawful use of excavators in protective forest zones. The devastation caused by these equipment is nothing short of evil. And we should not compromise in our efforts to protect our environment, forest reserves, and water bodies. I say with all the emphasis of my command that no rights can accrue to or flow from the criminal venture of balance. The equipment, which is being used for an illegal or criminal purpose, cannot confer on the owner or any other person any rights whatsoever. I appeal to all Ghanaians, including many in the opposition who are so doing, to rally behind government in its efforts to stamp out far-reaching illegality and criminality, rather than advocate for the protection of non-existent rights of persons caught in this evil activity. Right, so that was a president uh, speaking there, touching on the, the issue about Galamse and the fight against it, uh, the activities being done or undertaken by Operation Halt, that uh, no rights can accrue to persons uh, who are caught up in the act of illegal uh, small-scale mining. Uh, quite um, uh, a major statement there. Yes, uh, I'm not if I may wind up. A right does not accrue to anybody who is um, established to have committed a crime. But the right accrues to the person as to the dignity, as to, as to the determination of being treated in a dignified manner. Mm. He has a right to determine that if you, are, if, if, if you send me to prison, you treat me humanely. Sure. You understand? So what the president said cannot be entirely correct in law. Right. Even if you are found to be guilty of the commission of a crime, there are rights that you can accept. Now, I can, I can see the angle he wants to approach the matter from. And, so these are and desperate I, times. I, and, uh, yes, and I see that that is why they are quoting Good. the doctrine of necessity sure. to, to be able to justify the use of extra constitutional means or legal means to address the matter. But it doesn't, it doesn't remedy the situation. Would you, would Look, you, the, yeah. the excavators that they have bent and, and left them in the, in the, in the forest, they'll remain there for thousands of years because they become immobile. If they had, if they have given it a second thought, they would have moved the machines out of the area and brought them to a certain but collection point. But wasn't that what they did? I'm, I'm not, and the operation was it Vanguard? Yes. And so, then they so, went missing. So, so my 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 conclusion is that the government is confused. Okay. The approach of collecting the excavators and 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 dumping them at a certain single point for to be treated in mm. accordance with the law 
uh, got defeated because party persons went back for the excavators right. and went back to the bush. Right. Now, when you burn the excavators in the bush, you are creating another environmental disaster. Sure. The, the environmental issues are abound very, very much so. But Richard, see, the resort to this strategy of burning excavators on site. Can you hear me, by the way? I can hear you. Good. Of burning excavators and other, you know, equipment for uh, engaged in illegal mining. Obviously, it's coming on the back of the experiences of the previous attempt to fight Galamse, which is the operations by Operation Vanguard, I want to believe, and the fact that some excavators were seized, but subsequently they went missing. Question is, are we, is it so difficult to deal with the perpetrators of those, you know, if you like wrongdoing in the past, that led to the excavators going missing? to the point that would rather resort to something illegal to deal with an illegality. Is it so difficult to bring those people who were at the helm of affairs at the time to book rather than resort to this? Because there's, I mean, it's not, it can be disputed that the reason why we are burning the excavators on site and Operation Halt is because we don't want the experience of, uh, was it last year or, yes, last year under Operation Vanguard to happen again, which Two is that, yes, ago. we'll take the excavators, ago, and, uh, but then no. they'll go missing. So let's avoid that. Let's burn them on site. Is it so difficult to deal with those people who, quote-unquote, were, uh, were, were at the helm of affairs during that time? So much so that we want to deal with an illegality by, uh, conduct, by undertaking an illegality. Right. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, the Occupy Ghana uh, 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 reference to tainted property and how it is supposed to be disposed of has been answered by you, Abna. The fact that all those tainted properties have been disposed of in the legal sense of it. I didn't say that. No, the, the law says that you must give on. them to the can police. I, can I, can I, I can didn't I say that. <laughs> I, I, I barely started. You're burning the diesel legal man. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's an unlawful man. Okay. No, I'm saying at least your final, your final uh, mm -hmm. point in mm -hmm. asking the question mm -hmm. uh, to Operation Vanguard and all those things. Yep. And I'm saying those were the legal processes. Mm -hmm. People went to court and the court ordered the machines to be given to, back to them or placed at a certain point. But Some machines were mm -hmm. given to district assemblies to use to do construction and others. Those and same others went missing. Okay. And others went yes. missing. Yes, yes. And I'm saying Richie, that. Richie, you never gave my assembly a uh, machine. Oh, <laughs> my Please brother. Please carry on. Yes, carry on. Yes. I'm saying that. Whilst you are wrapping your head around this and getting the corporates to prosecute them and deal with them and blah, blah, blah. In the interim, what do you do? Should we continue to talk about collecting them and coming to put them down and use at the districts if that has failed? Are we talking about centralizing uh, them, putting them at a point and uh, dealing with the legal uh, issues and then going to redistribute them? That has been done. It has failed. In actual fact, this burning thing is not a new thing. In 2015, call uh, Honorable Inis Afusteni. He will tell you. There's a precedent. Now, what happens is that these are heavy equipment that you cannot carry on your head. They get there and when you are approaching or they are where you are coming, they take the control board off and you cannot do anything again with it. The people are criminally minded. Whilst we are trying to find a solution, a lasting solution to it, in the interim something has to be done to save our water bodies and our forests. And I'm saying that if it is in this particular instance, adopting the doctrine of necessity to resolve the interim and the interim, whilst getting a, 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 pen, a permanent or lasting solution to it. Let's get it done. Because the higher have, good here, have you the higher that, good here, your right and my right mm -hmm. to a large extent are dependent on we being alive in the first place to enjoy that right. Our forests, our water bodies are being destroyed. And that is a threat to our life. But what about I'm the burning? The what about the burning of the equipment in the water? Your life and my life. What about the pollution that could, I mean, happen with that as well? The burning of the metal in the water to the water itself and then the atmosphere. That is also uh, something we need to consider. Hold, hold, 
hold on, hold on, hold on. Most uh, uh, of the, the machines are being bent on land. Most of the machines are being bent on land. And in any case, Most, what would you suggest you be done? That would at least in the immediate situation stop the people from uh, engaging in the illegality because that is the crux of the issue. The people are not ready to obey the law. And unfortunately, those doing it, you cannot even physically apprehend them before because by the time you get there, they would have left. You know that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's quite a, a, <laughs> an, a, an octopus to deal with. Wherever you grab it, it finds a way around you. So this is an interim solution. You would need to do something about it because we cannot give up as a, a, a government and as a country. The president has the responsibility to protect life and property. And our life, to a large extent, depends on the trees and the water bodies. The last tree dies, the man, last man dies. Whilst we are thinking, some are suggesting ban uh, 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 mining altogether and leave it for the future generations because the generation has failed. Others have all sorts of solutions, like the Occupy Ghanaians. Those are brilliant ideas. And we can sit down and, uh, and come to a conclusion and a permanent solution. But till then, something has to be done. And uh, come to think of it, this is what we can best do right now to deter people from doing it. Now, you have been warned that ABCD is going to be done. If you are not criminally minded, that we are coming to Angkor Bra, we are coming here, we are coming to destroy and burn the excavators. If you are not criminally minded, what will still let you keep those machines there? And you are talking about the right of those people and their right to property. What about the right to life? We are hearing reports of kids being born with their body parts in the western and central regions, and there's a direct linkage to their use of these particular uh, uh, rivers, the water of these uh, uh, rivers. We will have to stop somewhere. Give ourselves a breathing space. The president's action is to give us a breathing space and get a permanent solution. The man has promised us he would do it. And he's doing it. The issue where people, even his intent was being questioned. Now, I all of a sudden am at a loss that the NDC is out there questioning why some highly uh, uh, placed political person within the MPP is the victim of all that is going on. And then you ask yourself that what is the intent? Is, the, is this a political matter or it is a life and death issue? And right. for me, it is life and death. And no matter who is caught in the crossfire, Yes. The president shouldn't be it. Which is why I will go back to the issue Let about the, 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 the political or government appointees who were at the helm of affairs under the previous operations. Because like you're saying, yes. irrespective of who you are, you should be dealt with in accordance yes. with the law. And yes. what that would do is also this, that it would deter subsequent you know, people who find themselves in those positions subsequently from doing certain things that yes. are alleged to have been done. Yes. We I wouldn't be, find ourselves in this situation if people had acted appropriately. And so, yes. as you are saying, that the president has promised to do things, I just want to hear what yes. the plan is or what is going on in respect of those allegations that were made about the missing excavators. Because as we speak, it seems there's nothing said about that. But we see a difference in approach, which speaks I'm volumes. Not, I'm not, I, let, let, me, let me save your breath. You are spot on. Investigations are ongoing. If your uh, media, uh, uh, your producers and your reporters would follow these issues to the uh, police headquarters, the BNI and the uh, national, uh, what do you call it, security, you realize there are ongoing investigations to bring... Uh, charges and prosecute people. But that is the question. These things take a process. It takes the legal regime in this country takes years to come to a conclusion. But it still has it to be done. Been. You sit down and wait. So now you must use extrajudicial means. To take place and people imprisoned before we act. I, no. I, Very well. There is yes. an emergency. And the emergency here is that life and property is at stake. Our future is at stake. Very well. If we have to take some extra 
a decision to solve that problem in the interim whilst we address this legalese in the future. We'll do that. Thanks. Thanks. Now, now Honorable, yes. talking about the emergency yes. situation we find ourselves yes. in, some have said that perhaps the president should have called in the powers of the emergency, I mean, his emergency powers to do what needs to be done. And perhaps that would have been situated appropriately within the confines yes, of the law. Yes, he could have moved under Article 31 and declared a state of emergency in respect of areas where the Galamse has become a developmental matter and deal with it. Then it will be appropriate to invoke the doctrine of necessity. Uh, uh, necessity in this matter. But you haven't done that. You speak of videos that you've seen videos of how the river beds have been degraded and therefore you are moving in. And yet you have refused to rely on videos of other government appointees who have been compromised and prosecute them. You're asking us to provide evidence. Even though you've seen those videos. Look. If you go to Agbogloshi, Agbogloshi is a slum. It's, be, it's, it's become a developmental issue for the urban, or, or, or for, 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 for the AAB. Should we therefore invoke the doctrine of necessity and move and, and, and raise it down? No, we must. Oh, you've done, you've done that in the past. The no, NDC has done that we in must, the past. We must use, you must use, and uh, you criticize us. We must use legal means. Oh, so, so it means the doctrine of necessity in the past has been. We adapted. didn't even invoke it. So we didn't even it say so. On your part to not no, see we didn't even right say so. So, so, Richard, the point we are making is that yes, we understand. We understand that this we are we are at a crisis point, but let's do things lawfully. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have been accused, if I say, the, the team has been accused of having gloss over other mining sites, other Galamse sites in the area. The evidence of that. So we need also to check that, that they, are not doing, they are not doing the thing in a selective manner. Yesterday, evidence it meant that they went, to a, they went to a place in Takwa and burned down about 15 excavators that, that have been packed at an area that is not even a Galamse site, Somebody, somebody's garage, sort of. All of them have been bent down. So, as well, much I mean, as definitely such a person, if somebody who has suffered that, you know, yes. fate, definitely uh, who have bring, a record exactly because they the are clear court. distinction. I mean, the, um, directions yes. as to there's so, a hundred. So, is it hundred meters from the, so, from yes, the, from meters. the water? Yes, hundred meters. Yes, within that range. And so if you go and beyond forest, that, and, then and clearly you're going and, outside. And, and the, the, other, the other aspect that others have raised, which I agree with, is that we could even be using the excavators to start some form of reclamation. We are not even reclaiming the areas that we've gone to, to meet. And we are destroying the machines Arabo, that would have helped Arabo, us to reclaim. Unfortunately, uh, Abna, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you can't use excavators to do reclamation. They dig. You that know? is what excavators do. Yes, excavators do. dig, what but they can use, help what you. Do you use, what do you, you use in reclaiming Abu Doses? Reclamation, they're reclamation, reclamation is a process. The excavators no. can help you to fill the, the trenches first of all. Then the bulldozers can level. I've also it, done some some the, some, the, some. The, the, the excavators actually dig. Yes, but they can they also dig. have to refill. That's very the point. Well, that's they fine. have a role that, to play. The, the point is, definitely, government wants to avoid what happened not too long ago. That yes, we will take these mm, with uh, the view to using them, them, but eventually uh, yes. they will go missing. It's the party so people. Let us not when go the party, there again. when the party team so goes down for the excavators. Yeah. You are unable, they are, you are unable people to say are anything. punishing them by burning their excavators. <laughs> what is your problem? But, but the but, ultimate thing but, but is see, doing things in accordance with law. Because the president in his statement, even whilst he was making the statement, talked about the rule of law, democracy, and all of that. And, that, and that's hypocritical. Let it. me ask him. Nyama, you took, you took a lot of your party people to China in 2018 and trained them and issued them licenses to do small-scale mining. What, what has come out of that program? I am not aware of what you are saying. Oh, a lot. If I was even your budget, just a minute. It was a government program. No, um, Richard, you don't have to answer honourable Dr. Mokos questions, please. <laughs> he doesn't. So please, let's move on. Now, way forward. Um, let me take. Let me take from you first. Okay. We just have about two minutes to go, so I'll split that between the two okay. of you. Um, obviously, Ghanaians are rallying around the fight against Galamse, but where it is alleged that certain acts have been done 
to you know get certain people involved for the benefit of certain people obviously that is not the way to go we would want the galamse fight to be fought genuinely and have you know our environment restored in the state to the state that we would all want to see it in so in yeah. conclusion Mr. Nyama, let us know your concluding remarks in a minute. Yes, uh, it's gladdening to know that about 68% of the general populace is in support of what the government is currently doing. And we need the backing of all Ghanaians to nip this in the bud. The uh, issue about uh, the legal processes and punishing people who are culpable, like I told you, investigations are being uh, done. And uh, probably the media should do follow-ups. I have given you a hint. Uh, and uh, you would have that play out accordingly. But in the interim, it is an emergency. It is urgent. Something has to be done. Everybody should support us to nip this in the bud and reclaim our water and forest bodies. Very well. Uh, Honorable Dr. Yamako. Yes, uh, Abna, like I said, um, government has a right to deal with issues that, social issues that crop up. But they are obliged to use lawful means mm. to remedy uh, the commission of an illegal act. They should learn to use the laws that government itself brought to parliament for us to promulgate provide a procedure to handling this matter. They should follow that procedure and deal with the social issue that uh, uh, surrounding the issues of Galamse. But once again, I'll ask, Richard, what has come out of your program for small-scale <laughs> miners that you took to China, brought them back and gave them license? Very they well. are creating this problem for you. Is it? Your own the people. Pro the program has closed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, just one last thing before you yes. go. I just want us to touch on the possibility, you know, people have raised issues about what is happening, the burnings, and the fact that people could take, um, have, seek redress in court. Exactly. And when that happens, there's a potential for government to incur um, some judgment debts. Yes, uh, and, yes yeah. I agree that that is a possibility, mm -hmm. but it may not be on a large scale. Mm -hmm. A few may succeed, because I... From what he's saying, government, it, it appears government is putting its house in order to argue in court the doctrine, factors okay. based on doctrine of necessity. But there are a few of them, like the incident in Takwa area, sure. for instance. Outside so the they should be careful, because already there's evidence that some, someone has gone to court and obtained judgment in excess of $50 million against us. For his excav excavators that were taken two years ago mm. and cannot be traced. Mm. They went for his machines from a lawful mining site. He's gone to court. They are asking for the state to produce the excavators. They can't find them. So they've been valued and judgment has been entered. And now we are obliged to pay. Wow. So as much as we agree that they should fight the menace of a galamse, they should do so lawfully. Mm. Wow. That, that's an interesting one there. But, I mean, this is where we bring conversations for close. And um, let me say a big thank you to my panelists for this uh, part of the conversation. Honorable Roxin Dafia Mokpo, MP for South Dai. Uh, he's also a lawyer. And um, Mr. Richard Nyama on Zoom. He is the Deputy Communications Director uh, with the new Patriotic Party, NPP. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Richard, thanks. And Honorable, thank you so much. It's been a delight to come your way as usual with this program. And thank you, our viewers and our listeners, for spending a Saturday morning with us. We do appreciate that. We'll be back here same time next week. Until then, have a good weekend, stay safe, and keep well. Bye-bye.